Uh, Sean, yes. it's, uh, uh, it's a great pleasure meeting you here in New York. Um, you are a New Yorker. Mm. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the New York you grew up in? You I grew up in? Well, it was uh, it's 50 years ago. It was a kind of odd mix between Brooklyn and Greenwich Village. My dad owned a bookshop in Greenwich Village on the corner of McDougal Street and um, 8th Street. And it was a kind of a crossroads, literary crossroads. So I grew up amidst all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so the beat poets were there all the time, and Allen Ginsberg was there all the time, and uh, all of those characters. And then down the block, the folk revival was going on, so Bob Dylan was there. And so I ended up writing a book about Bob Dylan many years later. So that was one part of my growing up in New York. The other part was Brooklyn, and Brooklyn was rather different. Uh, there weren't, it wasn't quite so literary, but it was a lot of fun, and it was, it was very much a New York boyhood. You wrote a book on Bob Dylan, Bob mm -hmm. Dylan uh, in America. Do you think that somebody like Bob Dylan would agree with Walt Whitman? That without culture, without a literary spirit, democracy cannot survive? I don't know if you put it quite that way, but certainly America couldn't survive without it. And uh, Bob Dylan's work is very much a contemplation and an absorption of many different layers of American culture. Musical, first and foremost, but literary as well. And he, re -transform he transforms those into his art. But he's always drawing on the deep, deep currents. Subterranean in some cases, sometimes not so. But that is his art, or rather, that's, those are the materials for his art. He's a kind of magician or alchemist, and he turns it into something very, very new. But he is quintessentially American, and um, I think that he sees the spirit of America very much in its culture, in its song, in its poetry, and all of that. Yeah, sure. So he would agree. I mean, democracy was a big word for Whitman, <laughs> because it was a big word in the 19th century. Um, I mean, America was the very first lasting republic of its kind, and democracy was the way that one looked f to the future in America, and democracy was a very big word. The word has changed by the time we get to the 19th, into the 20th and into the 21st century, so it wouldn't have quite the same resonance um, for someone like Bob Dylan as it did for, for Whitman, but the idea is pretty much the same. Yeah. As a New Yorker, um, you also know uh, uh, quite well a man like Philip Roth, Mm -hmm. The great novelist who wrote this yes. remarkable book, *The Plot Against America*, yeah, yeah. and uh, it's a kind of sequel to Singular Lewis. It can't happen here. Yeah. To almost prophetic novels on, well, fascism can come to America mm -hmm. as well. And um, what makes you that optimistic uh, that it can't happen here? Well, I mean, look, America has been very lucky so far. I mean, we always, the times of great crisis, we come up with the Lincoln or FDR. I'm hoping that we'll find someone like that now. Um, I'm optimistic because what Philip Roth in that novel very brilliantly captures as elements of a fascist America that are very much there and very much around. I don't see them as having the kind of power that they've had in Europe, for example. I don't see it happening today. Um, I think that it'll be, if it were even to get a measure of power, that it would be repudiated. I, I do believe that's the case. That's not to say that it isn't there. That's not to say that it's not dangerous. And it's certainly not to say that we, you know, one shouldn't fight it with all one's might. Um, but I wouldn't go in with the kind of, oh, we're about, you know, America's about to fall. Um, the brilliance of that novel, in fact, you see at the end, everything kind of turns out all right. <laughs> I think things, things turn out okay in the end. And that's not just wishful thinking. There's something about the dynamic of what's going on, even in that novel, where things are going to work out all right. Um, Part of it's just you know a matter of temperament. I mean, I'm I prefer the happy warrior to the you know to, to, to the gloomy veteran. Um, I don't see the system as broken. I see the system as having been moved and taken very far in a, in a crazy direction by one political party, and um, that has to be set right again. I think it will be set right again, but I don't think institutionally we're in a crisis. I think rather. One party has gotten so extreme that it has seized upon what it can within the system to try and clog the system up. That's their, that's their, that's their purport. That's what they want to do. They want it to be dysfunctional. Um, that's rare. It's happened before. But I don't think that it means the system is so wrong. There's nothing wrong that one election can't undo.